seen family trees before, but you may not have known that a pedigree is just another name for a family tree. Let's break down all the parts of this particular pedigree. Off to the side, there are Roman numerals, and these stand for the generations 1, 2, and 3, which are basically the grandparents, parents, and grandchildren. Each square represents a male, and the circles represent females. A central line connecting a male and a female shows either a marriage or that they've produced children. Lines that lead to the tops of circles and squares show the children of the people who have mated. A shaded square or circle means that they have the trait we're tracking, and an unshaded square or circle means that they do not have the trait. There are some patterns in pedigrees that will tell you whether they're recessive, dominant, or sex-linked. Let's look at those patterns. First, we'll look at autosomal dominant traits. Dominant traits tend to show up more frequently, often in multiple generations. The children of recessive parents can't have the dominant trait, and that's a key way to tell them apart from recessive traits. Autosomal recessive traits tend to show up later in generations, and it can come from two parents who don't show the trait. Sometimes pedigrees will show carriers who are heterozygous for the trait, but don't express the trait. Sex-linked traits are typically recessive, although there are a few dominant sex-linked traits. These traits tend to show up more in males than females, and this pedigree shows a recessive sex-linked trait. It is possible for females to have a sex-linked trait, but it's only if a mother is a carrier or has it, and if the father has the trait. Then a daughter can be had with the sex-linked trait. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.